To my entrepreneurs out there, I'm gonna change your life in the next 10 minutes. And I don't say that lightly. This, is, this practice that I'm gonna share with you today or a couple of tips and tricks have truly changed my efficiency level, my efficacy, and my output as an entrepreneur. And I know that if you're watching this and you're a creator of any kind, you're an artist, you're an entrepreneur, you're a visionary of any kind, and I know that a lot of the people that watch me and follow me on my channel do identify as a creator and a world changer, this is gonna be so profoundly important for you because if you're an entrepreneur and you're working your tail off the way that I know you are to create your vision, to create something out of nothing, to share your genius with the world, you know that every little piece of your system matters and anything we can do to biohack, to, to improve our performance and amplify our impact, we wanna do because it makes a huge difference. What I'm gonna teach you in this next video is how I use essential oils and the limbic brain, leveraging the limbic brain on a daily basis to biohack my emotions and to make sure that I have control over my stress levels, control over my mental health, especially when things get crazy because I know that there are moments where you have a bender of an all-nighter because you can't go to sleep because your vision is calling you to create something and it doesn't matter that it's 4 a.m. The website needs to be done. The program needs to be coded. The emails need to be sent. I've so been there and I've also been on the other end of that optimistic, visionary, uh, exciting side of entrepreneurship and I've been in the burnout phase. I've been in the absolutely um, burning both ends of the candle, running on all cylinders, foregoing sleep and food to create this vision. And I know what it feels like to burn out. And I know what it feels like to feel like you don't have anything left to give. And I don't want you to get there because this journey of business is not only not a sprint, it's actually not a marathon. It's a lifetime. So when we are creating something with our lives, it's not sustainable for us to just go through these cycles of burnout. It's way, way, way more effective to just manage your emotional state, manage your time, manage your sleep, manage your stress levels proactively so you don't get to that point where I have so been, where I've done like four all-nighters in a row. I used to live in New York City. I'm in Boston now, obviously, but I just have these like very kind of like fond but sort of not fond memories of being like on my apartment floor asleep on my laptop because I'd like fallen asleep coding some system and my roommates will wake me up and be like what are you doing on the floor I'm like I don't know so I've totally been there um, and these are some of the tips and tools that I've learned throughout the journey that I want to share with you today uh, and just help you make these small incremental improvements that really over time compound and change your system profoundly so Unsurprisingly, I'm talking about essential oils. A lot of times we think about the physical properties of essential oils and how they can help us in the physical body, but we often overlook how powerful the emotional benefits of essential oils can be. Um, one in five Americans have taken some sort of medication for psychoactive disorder, such as anxiety or depression, in the last year. Um, and that number is only going up. Um, it's unsurprising though, because we are overstressed, we're overstimulated, and we are living in a mismatch environment evolutionarily. The lifestyles we live today with our chronic acute stress levels, our horrible inputs in terms of our processed, highly, highly refined, um, largely unrecognizable food that we consume, we don't sleep enough, we're generally pretty sedentary. And so we're creating these lifestyles that don't match the way our bodies were designed to thrive. So we're stressed, we're, over, we're overstimulated, we are overwhelmed, and we are actually super lonely. One in three Americans have reported feelings of loneliness on a daily basis, despite the fact that I'm talking to hundreds, tens of thousands of people through my iPhone. Um, we're still like the loneliest generation that has ever come um, come to pass in the world and it's just because our lifestyles don't match the way that we were designed to connect and thrive and communicate and, and create that hearty, raw, authentic connection with people. We're not doing that anymore. So that's kind of an overview of where we're at. We're not well emotionally. How many of you are, I mean, no judgment at all, but probably a lot of you watching this are on medications for psychoactive disorders or you know someone that is and that is nothing to be ashamed about. We actually need to remove the stigma around mental health because ultimately we're all dealing with it. We all have uh, moments of mental illness, mental unwellness, um, dis-ease, and it's nothing to be ashamed about, but I really, really hope that this video and, and some of the things that I can um, share with you can help you proactively manage your emotions in a way that don't doesn't require medication and doesn't require um, substance abuse or really dangerous coping mechanisms that I've also been there too. So again, no judgment. This is truly coming from a place of love and acceptance and um, empathy because um, 
I get it. I, I We live in the 21st century in our 20s. It's, it's just a crazy world. It's a crazy life that we live in. So anyway, I digress. I want to talk to you a little bit about the limbic brain, and then I'm going to give you some actual tips and tricks and real tangible ideas. So the limbic brain. When we smell a smell, it's processed through our olfactory system, and it is processed directly in the limbic brain. Sense of smell is the most primitive sense that we have. In fact, our other senses like sight and sound and taste, they go through a relay system in our brain before we process and interpret them. But smell is so primitive that it doesn't even go through a relay station. It just goes straight into that limbic brain. And the limbic brain is where we process emotion and memory and long-term trauma. Uh, interestingly. So I want you to do a little thought experiment with me while we're chatting. And I want you to think back to a time where you smelled a really familiar smell and all of a sudden you were transported into another place in time in the time space continuum. Maybe you walked by a bakery and they were using cinnamon and suddenly you're at grandma's house and you're 10 years old. Or maybe you walk by a stranger on the street and you smell a familiar smell and suddenly you're reminded of your ex-lover's t-shirt. These things happen all the time. And as soon as you notice it, you're going to start to recognize just how, um, how integrally linked our sense of smell and our memories are. So if we know that there is that link, there is that connection between smell, olfactory system, and the limbic brain, then we can start to leverage that link. Um, Ali, my best friend, um, who you guys have definitely met through social media somehow, uh, will always say that neurons that fire together, wire together. And so basically what she teaches people how to do as a neuroscientist and aromatherapist is to leverage that link that neural link and create association between scent and emotion. And we can do that proactively. So we can say, I want to actively link the scent of adaptive in my brain. This is one of doTERRA's new blends. It's actually designed um, with, the, with the intrinsic uh, physical properties of these oils. They are going to give you a sense of stress relief. It's working on the stress pathways of the body. Um, and because it has, for example, lavender, it has high con constituency of linalool. Linalool, actually, there was a study in Japan recently that linked linalool to um, similar comparable effects, linalool specifically, this isn't a doTERRA study, so this isn't non-compliant to say, but linalool is, uh, was com comparable to the effects of Valium, which is a muscle relaxant, and they're using lavender scent preoperatively um, in, surgical, in surgical wards to help patients relax and um, to bring down those stress levels. So because there is lavender in this blend, the physical inherent properties are going to bring down the stress levels. But what I can also do proactively is train my brain to link a sense of calm with this smell. And the more I, re like, more I reinforce that link, the stronger that association is gonna become. So if I, over time, train my brain, every time I smell this smell, to take five deep breaths and really settle into a sense of balanced, calm, um, you know, lower those cortisol levels, then the, the more I do that intentionally, the quicker it will be that I can smell this smell and my brain will be transported into that emotional state. In the same way, you can use something like peppermint to invigorate you and you can train your brain to associate peppermint with that zest for life and energy and focus and enthusiasm. So that's a really, really interesting way that we can proactively leverage positive psychology and say, hey, maybe we're, we're at neutral, we're at status quo, but we want to, to, to transport ourselves into a higher vibrational state of emotion. And we can use oils to, to proactively get into an emotional state that is desirable. In the same way, we can actually use essential oils on the other side of the, of the spectrum to address negative emotions and to rewire our brain and start to reassociate positive memories um, instead of those negative emotions. So what aromatherapists do, and a lot of people on my team are trained aromatherapists, Ali included, and um, many people on my team, and what their whole practice is, is helping people rewire traumatic memories and replace them with positive emotions using scent as an anchor. So for example, we have the doTERRA emotional aromatherapy line, and a lot of these oils, for example, we have something like console or peace or cheer. And what you can do with these blends, these blends are designed by, um, by chemists and scientists to be a perfect blend to address certain emotional states. But if you were going to be using those oils, you can literally say, I'm feeling doubt. I'm feeling, um, you know, low self-esteem. And you, the point is, is that it's okay to feel those feelings. And it's important to feel those feelings because if we can really identify those emotions and sink into them, 
then we can release them and replace them with positive emotions. So a lot of times people just try to run from negative emotions. Uh, as a society in general, we're pretty afraid of the dark. Uh, we're just constantly looking to numb ourselves using substances or you know, re repressing our emotions, and we're not really willing to sit in them. And a really important part of the process of releasing negative emo emotions is sitting in that negative emotion and, and observing it as a witness and saying, I feel doubt and I don't like that I feel that, but it's important that I feel it so that I can, I can really identify it and name it. And then I can use my oils as an anchor to start to rewire those negative emotions and, and replace them with positive emotions. Again, using that neural link and saying, okay, when I'm feeling this way, I'm going to proactively inhale a citrus oil, which is high constituency of limonene, which is physically in the body going to increase rates of those you know, happiness neurotransmitters and uh, feelings of excitement and, and cheer and joyfulness. And I can rewire those negative emotions. And again, the more we do that, the more we reinforce that link, the more powerful it will be in helping us get out of those emotional states. So a lot of times I tell people to have good triggers around. Um, for example, have a cheer or motivate or a citrus oil in your car. So if you're getting in traffic and you're stressed out, you can have that oil right beside you and use, use the traffic, use the anxiety of, you know, uh, being late for something as a trigger to say, okay, I'm going to grab my oil. I'm going to proactively use this safe, natural, certified, pure therapeutic grade tool to bring that stress level down. And the more you do that, the more effective it will be. So that's a little bit of an overview of how this works uh, biochemically in the body, mechanistically in the body. Um, and then I'm going to share a couple of ideas I have that I use on a daily basis or use with my friends or my entrepreneur friends to, um, to really put these uh, ideas into practice. I have worked with Obviously, I, I work on a daily basis with tons of inspiring creative entrepreneurs and um, I am constantly creating new systems and new ideas and new tools for, for my team to be using, whether that's for Geno or Team Oil or even my friends at Harvard. Um, I'm constantly coming up with new creative ways to, to optimize our mental health and our mental well-being and our mental acuity and our efficiency whether that's improving our sleep by using essential oils at night to bring down our stress levels and help us get deep restful sleep or helping us with focus and memory and cognition while we're studying or while we're, um, while we're performing or before a big presentation. Um, I'm constantly using my oils on a daily basis for all of these different avenues and they really amplify my own, um, my own system. So one thing I do really a lot, uh, which is cool, is I help people make custom blends designed to um, address what it is they're working on. So the first time I did this was with a really good friend of mine, um, Joss, and he was on his way to a big promotion in his business. And he was really, really anxious and he was doing a lot of visualization and meditation and um, goal setting around this big promotion. And that promotion would also include him getting up on stage and giving a speech and um, sharing in front of multiple hundreds, well, not hundreds of thousands, but mo tens of thousands of people sharing about this big accomplishment. It was a big freaking deal. So what we did is we got together and I had him close his eyes and visualize the feelings that would be associated with that goal. So really embodying the goal, not just um, objectifying the goal and saying, well, I need this many, I need, need this much volume in my business. I need this many new customers, blah, blah, blah. That's objectifying the goal. But a lot of times what we don't do is personify the goal and really embody the goal and allow ourselves to feel those feelings as if the goal had already happened. It is as if we'd already achieved that goal because we're basically preparing our body and preparing our mind to achieve the goal. Um, someone smart once said that we, everything that happens to us happens to us twice. Once, in our mind and once in reality. So we have to prepare ourselves in advance, emotionally and cognitively and um, mentally before we actually um, achieve that goal in reality. So what we did is he closed his eyes and I said, okay, Joss, when you are up on stage, how do you feel? Sink into that feeling. And he was telling me adjectives like humbled, inspired, motivated, overwhelmed, exhausted, anxious, um, visionary, all of these beautiful adjectives. And what we did is we went through into the Emotional Aromatherapy book, which you can totally get online. If you don't know where to get this, I can send you the link. But basically it allows us to go in and identify essential oils and their emotional um, benefit. Similarly, we also have these emotional wheels, which I love. So what you can do with these wheels is you can say, okay, um, I'm feeling empowered. 
empowered right there. And in the, in the, um, specifically I'm feeling empowered and motivated and it will literally give you the oil that it recommend that the, that the experts recommend to associate with that feeling. So in this case, we created an essential oil blend for him that he could take on the go. And what that looked like is we put in some of the oils that we had identified that associated with the emotions he was feeling. And then we literally put them in like five to 10 drops of each and then topped off with fractionated coconut oil. And now he has this blend to take it with him in his pocket on the go. And he literally would send me Snapchats of him on the go or on the subway or um, with this oil. So in the end, we ended up doing um, Cypress, which is the oil to release limiting beliefs and the oil for um, uh, removing emotional blocks. So one of the things we identified was that there were a few emotional blocks and self-esteem things that he was going to have to overcome to really step into that version of himself that had already achieved that goal. We did lime because lime is the oil for the zest for life. It's a personal favorite of mine. And then we did uh, vetiver, which was going to bring down some of those anxious feelings and really ground and center him. So we created this blend and then he would use this oil and literally just put it on, um, inhale that oil. And then every time he did so, he would say an affirmation and really visualize that goal on a daily basis. And then every time he smelled this smell, he was reinforcing that vision for his life. And it's a super powerful tool. So if you are an entrepreneur and you are doing any kind of visualization exercises, any kind of goal setting, it is so powerful to link a scent with that goal. Because again, we're really, really leveraging and utilizing and taking advantage of our neurochemistry and the way that our brain performs optimally and we're almost hijacking it using essential oils to even further amplify the effects of our visualization and our goal setting. So that is the number one tip I have. And if you want me to help you identify some oils that would be really great for your specific goals, I'm so more than happy. Obviously it's like what I do for my life and would be so thrilled and excited to help you develop your own personal scent, your own personal goal scent. And you can do different scents for different goals. But if you don't need my help and you're a self-starter, I would really recommend this book. My upline gave it to me and it's uh, been really, really helpful. So you would just literally go into this book and you would say, okay, cool. Um, rosemary is the oil of knowledge and transition. Or lavender is the oil of calm communication. So whatever you're needing in your life, you can really proactively identify that and use your oils. Um, I was so nervous. I've talked about this story a bunch of times, but I was so nervous about the GRE, which was the standardized test that I had to take before I got into Harvard. And I was just a wreck. I was so nervous. So I was using blue tansy on my solar plexus, which is the oil of inspired action. And I was using in tune, um, which was an oil that I had used all throughout Dartmouth. And I had created that neural link to associate in tune this blend. You guys have seen it before this blend with um, an area of single-minded attentiveness with super focus, with flow state, with um, improved enhanced cognition. And so every single time I used this oil, I was studying and it would, it would make it sacred. I couldn't use this oil unless I was in the library studying. I was like deep in the stacks, having a bender of an all-nighter, which was pretty much all the time. Um, and so I like literally like, this is my sacred oil for focus and studying. And every single time I use this oil, because that neural link is so strong, because I've been using it for over two years, every time I study, I smell the smell. I'm, like, I'm anxious to smell it right now because I'll want to go study. <laughs> I'll like literally be in the books. So I used this oil during the GRE and it was, uh, it was not only um, biochemically assisting my brain's ability to function and focus, but there was a level of placebo effect and comfort because I had um, trained my brain to associate that with focus. So I did smell it and I felt a sense of peace and confidence because I knew that that was going to really help me in that test. And, uh, they always say like study in the same environments, you'll take the test. Like if you're chewing gum while you study, you should also chew gum while you take the test because your brain is associating what you're learning and, and what you're doing and, um, the information that you're, that you're, um, you're putting into your brain with that area and that environment, that context. So it's a really, really helpful trick that people like people have always been telling me to do that and oils just amplify it. And the fun fact is oils aren't cheating. They should be because they really do make such a big difference, but um, you can have an edge on your competition and um, other people that are, uh, and your colleagues that you're working with, if you're using oils, uh, you definitely have a competitive edge. Uh, another thing I do, I do a lot of things. 
um, I will create a daily scent intention. Now this is really, really cool and important uh, because you know something I'm very passionate about is reducing our toxic load as a society at large. Um, we are so inundated with toxins on a daily basis in our products, in our food, in our air, in our water. Um, almost every single thing we come into contact with has um, is giving us toxic exposure. And one of the things that freaked me out a few years ago, I watched this documentary called Stink, and it basically goes through some of the different known carcinogens and endocrine disrupting hormones that are in our products and in our um, perfumes and creams and foods and even baby formula. Literally everything is having these preservatives and toxins and the US regulator, regulatory wise um, is really, I <laughs> can't speak, is really more innocent until proven guilty in terms of like regulating toxins and chemicals. Um, versus the EU, which is very much the opposite. They will really, really test and make sure a, a product is safe before they allow it on the market. The US has kind of been in more of this lackadaisical, like, well, it's not really seeming to harm anyone. And then they test it in isolation. And that's not really that helpful because we're never really only exposed to one chemical in isolation. We're exposed to hundreds and they're combining and the amalgam of these chemicals, we don't know the effect it's gonna have on the body. Um, you know, maybe one chemical in isolation this one time in this one specific context of a study was fine, but what happens when you mix that chemical with the other chemicals that are in that product, not to mention the other chemicals in the other products that we're all using simultaneously. So the word fragrance alone, fragrance on a label, is a disaster. It can have over 3,000 to 5,000 different chemicals completely disguised under this word fragrance. And that is a regulatory loophole. It's a, because fragrance technically in terms of like the regulation and the FDA and um, all of the consumer regulation rules basically it's saying that fragrance is a proprietary trade secret and if Chanel had to tell me exactly what chemicals and, and artificial smells they used in their quote-unquote fragrance then I could feasibly recreate Chanel number no. five in my bathtub so I don't get to know what's in my product all I see is alcohol water and fragrance that's so concerning 30% of the chemicals that are included under the guise of fragrance, even if it says natural fragrance or artificial fragrance, even if it says it's with essential oils, if it's not doTERRA, you don't know that those oils are pure, how they're sourced, if they're ethically sourced, what the supply chain looks like. So we're basically just completely at the mercy of these companies that are trying to hide as much as they can. They're trying to take advantage of all the loopholes that they can. So fragrance, I'm on a total soapbox, but fragrance is a disaster. So I have ditched perfume and I've replaced it completely with pure fume. And the really cool thing about this is that not only is it a non-toxic alternative to perfume by using essential oils, creating your own custom blend or using an oil, uh, a pure oil, it's also gonna be able to allow us to leverage the power of the limbic brain because not only am I creating an scent that is non-toxic, it's actually just, it's not only not bad for you, it's actually healing. So you have the physical properties of the oil that are gonna help on the physical level and then we also have the emotional properties of the oil that is, are going to help us on an emotional level. So my favorite oil, you guys all know this, this is my Steve Jobs oil, Clary Sage. It's an oil of, it's the visionary oil, the oil of aligned inspired action. Um, and so I use this oil all the time and people, not everyone loves the smell of Clary Sage, but I personally adore it just because of the amazing um, physical emotional properties that it has. So I use Clary Sage and not only is it a scent that's non-toxic, but now I'm able to anchor an emotional state with the smell. Or you can use um, one of the emotional aromatherapy oils and say if you have a really big meeting at work and you're kind of nervous, you might want to use um, Motivate. And what you do is you put that oil on in the morning and you do your affirmations and your meditation and you say, I am capable of everything I set my mind to. Abundance is my birthright. I am going to do incredible in this presentation. Um, I am unstoppable. Whatever you want to say, all the affirmations. I know they're silly, but they work really well. And then you take that oil with you on the go. So throughout the day, you're able to remind yourself of that intention that you set. So if you really are intentional with your affirmation in the morning, say your affirmation is, I am a powerful communicator. I am a powerful communicator. And then you are leading up to the presentation, you're getting nervous, and you can smell that smell and remind yourself of that intention that you set for the day. It's a super powerful practice. Um, again, I do carry oils with me all the time. I actually was looking for adaptive to show you guys, and it was in my leather, my vegan leather jacket that I take out when I go out to 
bars and whatever. Um, and I don't drink alcohol, as a lot of you guys know. So I use my oils, and I am in the I'm in the club with my oils. I have them. That's like just the point of me saying that is that I literally have them everywhere. Not only just like in my home, but in my backpack, in my pocket. Um, and I'm using them constantly to to um, shift states, to shift emotional states, to be proactive with my mental health, to be proactive with my stress levels. And it really has allowed me not only to leverage the power of these oils inherently in their physical properties, but also just become more aware of my own emotional state as a, as a person, as a conscious human, and recognizing that I have a lot more control over my emotions than I thought I did years ago before I had oils and before I was a little bit more evolved in terms of the way that I operate and the way that I go through the world. Um, we are not a victim to, to negative emotions. We're not a victim to our stress levels. Even though we're constantly in our sympathetic nervous system in fight or flight running around um, with elevated cortisol levels because you know our body can't tell the difference between an angry email from our boss and evolutionarily being chased by a bear, we can, we can actually use these natural tools to bring those stress levels down and to be really, really intentional with our mental health. And I know some of you watching this um, are in a bad spot. Like a lot of my, a lot of my close friends, a lot of um, the world that I interact with, like we are not well in terms of our mental health. Social media gives us anxiety. Um, our, our relationships give us anxiety. Our, our work environment, the way that we work, our sedentary life in a cube nine to five, or you know, even like 180 hour work weeks for, in the case of some of my friends that are in finance and um, consulting and these really high stress uh, jobs in our early 20s. This, isn't, this is not what we're designed to be doing. And it doesn't mean it's wrong. I mean, a lot of the people that are in these high stress level jobs are changing the world. They're important. They're making moves. They're making waves. They're changing the status quo. And it's really important. But we have to be careful and um, self-compassionate and kind to ourselves because um, we just have to recognize that our mental health is it, it's a complete product of a mismatched environment, of, of an of a existence day to day that is not is not how we were designed to live. It's not how we were designed to connect. So knowing that, have some self-compassion if you aren't well, if you are feeling feelings of depression or anxiety, you're not alone. So many people, myself included in the past, like I've definitely gone through periods of mental dis-ease and unwellness and you're not alone. It's not your fault. You're not wrong for having those feelings, but there is hope. There's so much hope. And I'm not just telling you to go buy oils and it'll cause you to completely cure any problem you've ever had. That would be silly. I know that's not true. But pairing those oils with intention, with, you know, maybe it's with professional therapy. Maybe it's with really more intentional time with the people that you care about. Maybe it's with meditation and a mindfulness practice. Pairing these tools with what you're already doing or, um, can be incredibly, incredibly helpful. And there's nothing wrong with not feeling well. It's okay to not be okay, but we don't want to stay there, right? When we're in a spot where we're not feeling well, we don't want to build a house there. We want to get through there and get to the other side and get to that you know, positive psychology. So we're not only going to use these tools to get to base level, but we're going to use them to elevate our base level and to really get to a state of absolute thriving, of um, you know, high vibe, inspirational, inspiring living because we have one life and it's our opportunity to make it count, to make it amazing, to live in a state of curiosity and wonder and joy on a daily basis. And you don't need external things to feel that way. Um, you don't need the big house and the crazy job and the perfect relationship to feel joy. Joy is a choice you can make every single day. And it's a choice that sometimes comes easily and sometimes it takes a lot of affirmations and a lot of oils, but we can get ourselves to that state and I fully believe that. And if you're watching this and you're on a really, really low point in your life, know that I'm here for you, know that I care about you, know that I love you, and know that there are hundreds of people around the world um, that love you too and you're not alone. So I know I'm always, I would be remiss to talk about mental health without, um, without sharing that because I think a lot of us have a lot of shame and there's no shame. Uh, it's not your fault and um, there's hope. So I'm rambling now a little bit, but I hope these tools feel really, really, really helpful to you. Um, it's been powerful for me just to have these tools at my, dis at my disposal and really have a clear understanding of how powerful our brains are and how powerful our limbic system and our olfactory system is in shifting states and rewiring our brains in um, giving ourselves a cellular upgrade, both physically and emotionally. 
So try these on for size. I'd love to hear in the comments if you have any other practices you do with oils. I know a lot of people do aromatic dressing, um, anchoring with oils. Um, I love hearing from aromatherapists. Uh, another really great resource is Desiree Magnadog. She's a doTERRA superstar and she has so many amazing blends to help us overcome limiting beliefs and to um, rewire negative emotions using oils. And she even has very specific pulse points and acupuncture points, acupressure points on the body where the oils are gonna be most effective. Um, I went to one of her sessions in Germany and it was so cool. She had us oil, oiling our forearms with specific oils because it was going to have a specific meridian effect on the body. So there's really cool people out there that know a lot more about this than I do, but that's just my personal experience with the oils and they've really, really amplified and changed my life in so many ways. So I can't stop sharing about it. I can't shut up about it. Um, just because it's important. It's really important. You deserve to feel great every single day. You deserve good mental health. You deserve to have empowering natural tools at your discretion and at your fingertips. You are so, so, so worthy, no matter how you feel right now. And I know that there's that there's a light at the end of the tunnel and that um, you're right around the corner from feeling um, feeling that high vibrational existence that you were born to feel. Love you very much. I love you all very much. And um, I will I will check in soon.